position the left hand on the club. Now, if you're a left-handed golfer, then it's your right hand. But we're talking about your lead hand for right-handed golfers is the left hand. And it's very important that you position it properly. One of the most common faults in golf is the incorrect positioning of the left hand in golf. So I really want you to get this from the very start. Get this left hand placed properly. Now, we're going to take our trusty nine iron out still. And with this left hand, you can see the markings. See, it's diagonally across my hand. A lot of times we'll actually get a pen and mark people's gloves when I'm giving them instruction because we see so often that people just grab the club like this and it gets too high in the palm. And that's no good for golf because it creates too much tension. It doesn't allow our wrist to cock or hinge, which is an important feature in the swing. It gives us a lot of power. So very important to get it lower down in the palm towards the fingers. Now you can see if I hold it up like so and I sort of shake hands with it, I'm bringing it from this angle, I position it right through the crook of this first finger under the little pad of the little finger and then I close my hand so. Now when I look down at it, I can see about two to three knuckles on top of my left hand and I have a little angle here formed at the base of my watch. My thumb is pretty much straight down the, the club, down the grip and the thumb and this knuckle are joined together. So really work hard on that. Remember, if you could hold the club up in front of you and then simply shake hands with it and feel it down towards the fingers. You want to feel a little pressure in these last couple of fingers here. Not strangling it, but just enough pressure that you can hang on to it. Now the right hand, there's a couple of different types of grips, but what I would suggest you do to start with is the most common grip is what we call the overlapping grip where the little finger of the right hand just simply fits on top, just rides piggyback. It's in the fingers and it fits on top in such a way that the hand is very snugly set up towards the left hand. You can see the hands work together as a unit. You don't want to grab it like you're grabbing a hammer. It wants to be pretty much in the fingers, nice and relaxed. And if I look at the V, we call this the V between the thumb and this first finger, it looks up towards my right shoulder and the right hand is parallel to it. So now my hands can work together as a unit. So important to get this grip right. You just want to fiddle around with this and get used to it so it feels natural because in the beginning a grip does feel a little bit awkward but I assure you good golf does begin with a good grip. So you need to put your hands on the club in the same way each time. So there's the grip and now we're ready to make a swing. All right, you following me so far? You're doing great. Okay, now we're going to pick this club up. And now we're going to learn to make a few of these mini swings. Now, very simple, very similar to just when we just had one hand and one arm on the club. But with two hands on, what I want you to feel as you swing back, I want you to feel your left arm moving across your body. You can see as I swing here, my left arm moves across my chest, only to about a halfway point, and my right elbow points down. Now conversely, as I swing through, as I swing through towards where the ball would be, I now swing through to the other side and my right arm goes across my chest and my left elbow folds down. So in making these little swings, we feel, say, left arm, right elbow down, right arm across the chest, left elbow down. And just doing this on a repetitive basis, remember, feeling the club the whole time. Don't grip it too tightly. Feel the weight of that club head. That is so important. So keep it going, back and forward. Do it continuously if you like. Left arm across the chest, right arm across the chest. And you can see my right elbow is pointing down, my left elbow is pointing down. That's a great way of learning to feel that swing. I really like it because it gives me the sensation as I do this that it gives me my rhythm, my flow, and that's so crucial, so key in a good swing. Now as I'm doing this, also get the feeling that your left knee is coming in. So we're now adding in a little bit of body motion. See the left knee points in, the right knee points in. So as I swing back, my left knee comes across, my right knee comes across. The actual fact, as I follow through, my right foot actually comes off the ground and my knees are touching. So just a little mini swing, back, through, and we can do this even with our eyes closed. I'd like you to do that because with your eyes closed, you get a great sensation and awareness of balance. 
So you feel back and through. In the beginning, you might sort of fall off your feet and lose your balance. That's okay. Remember, we're not hitting a ball at this stage. The beauty of doing this is that you learn to get the fit right feel without a ball. Do this at home. Do it indoors. Make sure you've got plenty of room, no lights or valuable paintings around. And also, be very sure there's nobody around close to you because uh, people have been hit with these golf clubs and they do hurt, I assure you. So remember, safety is very important. Even when you're at a, a driving range or a practice tee, just make sure nobody's around you or you don't walk behind anybody. So back, through, and then we're in business. So once you start to get the feeling of this little mini swing, you're really on your way. Now, what we've obviously got to do now is make contact with a certain point, the certain point being down where the ball is. So all you do is you get a tee, let's get this tee here, and the first thing you want to try to do is just to clip the tee out of the ground. Very easy, feet nice and narrow, got to keep watching it, you don't have to keep your head down that long, but certainly you've got to watch it to the point where the club head strikes it, and then swing through. Remember in the beginning, there might be a tendency to swing outside it, swing too far inside. Ideally, what we've got to do is strike it right in the middle of the face, not off the toe or the heel as it's termed. We've got to make sure that it's square as we make contact, but hitting tees out of the grass really is a major step towards actually hitting a ball. Remember, as I said earlier, what we're trying to do here is to learn to make a swing and let the ball, or in this case the tee, just simply get in the way. So let's see how we do. Just back and through, little half swings, boom. Now just doing that, clipping the tee out of the grass, you'll find that if you make contact with that tee each time, your confidence level will soar. And then you just get to a point where instead of hitting a tee, you just simply hit the grass, clip the grass back and through. So little half swing back, through, remember we're just using a nine iron, and then the next logical step is what? The ball. That's right. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do now, which I like to do, is tee about three or four balls up. Tee them about, oh, I don't know, half an inch up. Just spread them apart a little bit. And then, all we're going to do is we're going to go up and clip each ball off the tee, just like this. It feels so easy when you do it right, really effortless. It doesn't take a lot of energy or thrust in order to hit a golf ball solidly out of the middle of the club face. And that's an important factor. You can swing hard and try to kill it, and yet the ball doesn't go nearly as far as when you swing easy. A lot of the pros, you look at a lot of the lady pros, when they hit the ball, they really look like they're swinging very gently, yet hit the ball tremendous distances. And you will find that when you play your best golf, it'll feel relatively easy the ball will come off the face like butter. It's a great feeling. And there's no greater feeling in golf than really striking the ball out of the middle of the club. So learn to do this. You don't have to find a great area in order to do this. You'll hit them probably, oh, maximum of 100 yards with this 9-9, with this little swing. But it will give you the proper feeling for the swing. And I can't overemphasize how these little drills, working on these, will get you to a point in your golf game where you would never believe possible. You'll really improve very, very quickly, but more importantly, you'll be learning it the right way. Most people, unfortunately, they learn golf the wrong way and create all these bad habits. So you're on the right track if you work on these little drills. So now we've got to add a little distance into what we're doing right here. It's fine hitting a little nine iron, maybe a hundred yards, but however, oh, you want to get it out there. So what we have to learn to do now is to use some of the bigger muscles that we have in our back, and our shoulders and our legs in order to propel that golf ball a little further. So we have to understand how the body actually works, the movement that it actually makes. Now you saw in the 3D graphics how the body really turns and winds, how the spine winds back and winds through. So a bit of flexibility is important. If you're very tight and stiff or if you have a bad back, golf is a more difficult game to play. So a little bit of flexibility, doing a few stretches can also help in this game. Now, 
What I'm going to show you here is really how we turn the body, how we coil the body, wind it up, how we transfer our weight and then move through. Very much like a boxer who's winding up to deliver a punch. Or in tennis, a server when he's winding up and letting it go. We have to learn in golf that we've got to transfer our weight back and through and we do that through a turning motion of our body. So if you simply put your hands on your hips and then the turn really is if I was going to turn around and look at somebody behind me. See, if I'm going to turn, you see, I'm going to look at somebody behind me like this, and you'll see as I do this, my chest and my shoulders have turned about 90 degrees, my hips about 45, and I wouldn't turn and look at somebody like that because you see now my weight is on this side. Conversely, I wouldn't turn and look at somebody like that because now I've swayed my whole body to the right. So simply all I'm doing is just turning behind me. You can see how my hips have turned and I'm looking directly behind me, so my left elbow points in front of me. So that's a very easy way to understand how your body turns. Just simply turn, look at somebody behind you. You can see my left knees come in slightly. You don't have to move your foot too much. If you haven't got a lot of flexibility and your foot comes off the ground a little bit to help you, that's fine. Also, a little point to remember, the weight doesn't want to wobble to the outside of this right foot. The weight should stay just on the inside of the right knee. So a very easy little exercise to understand how the body turns. Now, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to go forward, obviously. This is the backswing. Now we've got to understand how we go through. So think of it this way. We turn back. We step into it. This is almost as if we're taking a little step forward. This gets my weight moving to my left side. So we turn, we step, and then we turn once again, all the way through to the finish. So I'm nicely balanced up on my toe. You can see I'm in good balance, I'm straight up and down. We see a lot of people when they try to swing through, they do this sort of thing or they do that sort of thing. All I'm trying to do is I turn back, I step, and I turn through. So get this feeling, get a little rhythm go. You can do it to music if you like. It's almost like one and two, one and two, one and two. Now, if you can learn to do that, you will find you'll really understand how your body actually moves. And you see the key is learning to tie in this movement with that little movement that we were making earlier. You can go one stage further, put a club behind your back. I like to do this with people, hook it between your elbows, turn back, step into it, turn through. And this is a great warm-up exercise too. Remember, before you play golf, before you hit balls, you should be warming up a little bit. So now we're in a position where we can learn to really understand how the pivot action actually works in the swing. Boy, you're getting this whole swing down, aren't you? I hope you're following me up to this point. You're doing really well. Just remember, just understand it bit by bit. Understand what the club's doing. Understand what the body's doing. Once you put them all together, hey, that's the golf swing. You'll have a swing for life. Okay, right. Now, we're really, really just about to get into hit some shots. Now, before we do that, Remember that hopefully you spent quite a bit of time doing this because the more natural it can become, the better. You want this to be a very natural type of golf swing. You don't want to have to stand there and think about it, as I say. I don't like people thinking about this swing too much because if they are thinking, it's not working. Remember, you practice this in order that it becomes natural. You practice an actual fact in order to forget about it. So now, taking your seven iron, what I'm going to do is ask you just to get a ball, say a, a softball if you can, or football, soccer ball, whatever, just simply place it between your elbows, just like so. And really, the reason you do this is that you're just trying to feel how your arms and your body work together. We see in many cases that many golfers, many beginners and novices and uh, weekend golfers, they tend to sort of fly their elbows all over the place. So to get some sort of consistency, all we do is just place this ball between our elbows and swing it back. Remember, remember the turn we've been working on, remember the position. I'm trying to feel at the top there, my, my left thumb is under the shaft. And you can see I've got the ball between my elbows. I simply swing it back, feel it under here, and then from here I swing through nice and smoothly. It's almost a full swing. I turn back, thumb underneath, my right elbow is pointing down. I keep the ball between my elbows and then through. So do it with a softball if you can. It's much, much easier. So get yourself one. So back forward, and boom, there we go. So that's the whole swing. That's a complete swing, back and forward. You can see as I do this as well, 
important to really try to hold this finish position. You'll see all good golfers, they tend to hold that finish position. As I term, it's like signing your name to your shot, good or bad. Try to get to this position.